Good morning, guys. Aaron Dorr here again with the Missouri Firearms Coalition at the Capitol again today fighting to save SAPA law, number one, and to advance our Stand Your Ground Law Expansion Act. But guys, there is some information that, frankly, we should have known about a long time ago that we came across in the last 24 hours that gun owners absolutely need to be made aware of. So we're doing this video right now before I even go inside today to give you guys the facts you need to help us fight to save SAPA law uh, here in Missouri. So here's some, here's some context. When we passed constitutional carry law in this building behind me in 2016, one of the biggest sources of our opposition was Missouri's law enforcement community, the county sheriffs. And the reason for it was blatantly simple. They said, well, we're gonna lose money. We're going to lose money if Missourians exercise freedom and choose to not get a permit. And so Missouri's law enforcement community was heavily opposed to constitutional carry in 2016. The way that, um, that that was gotten around was the legislature chose to make other types of background checks performable by the county sheriff, basically to bribe them into shutting up and leaving constitutional carry alone in 2016. That's all, there's always been a profit motive amongst department heads when it comes to their opposition to our right to keep and bear arms. I'm not saying all cops. I'm saying for many sheriffs here in Missouri and many police chief department heads, there has always been a profit motive in their opposition to your freedom, your right to keep and bear arms. But folks, it is on steroids now. Again, we should have known this earlier. We didn't. We came across it in the last 24 hours here in Jeff City. Here's the situation right now when it comes to SAPA. A couple years ago, Missouri passed a very strong civil asset forfeiture law that protects Missourians from unscrupulous forfeitures. So, you know, people that carry cash for work, people that carry cash for all kinds of reasons, both good and bad, the Missouri legislature passed civil asset forfeiture laws to protect you, protect me, from having that money confiscated just because some department wanted to get their hands on your money. That's law right now. And so what that did was dry up a bunch of the cash that these departments use to fund their operations. So here's what they did. They jumped into bed with the federal government. And right now in Missouri, when these departments help the federal government with federal task forces or fusion centers and stuff like this, this task force stuff, when they join up with federal departments and they help them on their investigations on federal task forces, the feds can seize anything they want. They are not subject to Missouri's laws that help protect us from illegal civil asset forfeiture. I'm getting kind of detailed here, I know, but short version is the state cannot take the money, hardly at all. The feds can take whatever the hell they want through civil asset forfeiture laws. And here's the deal, here's the rub. When they do that right now in Missouri, 80% of what they take, 80% of that civil asset forfeiture money that the federal government seizes, 80% goes to local law enforcement agencies who help them. It, 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 it's, it's impossible to quantify. This could be millions and millions and millions of dollars. So they can't do it here locally under Missouri law, but when these, when you're St. Louis, when you're Kansas Cities, when you're Columbia's, your Springfield's, your Jeff City's, all these departments, when they jump into bed with the federal government, with Merrick Garland, with Joe Biden, and they aid the feds in their federal task force work, they get 80% of that money. There is an absolute clear profit motive. It's all about money. So when we passed SAPA, the money stopped because that task force cooperation now, in many cases, is no longer allowed here in Missouri due to SAPA. That's why 60 department heads are trying to roll back SAPA right now in Missouri. They want that money. It is shameful. It is disgraceful. It is beneath the dignity of the office that these people hold. They should be ashamed of themselves, ashamed of themselves for trying to prostitute 
your freedoms, my freedoms, our freedoms for money from the federal teat. That is what's going on. If you guys find this disgusting, then give me a big thumbs up right now because it's always been this way. They opposed constitutional carry for the money. They opposed SEPA for the money. They oppose your freedoms all because of the money. It's disgusting behavior. Disgusting. And so it's important for gun owners, we are conditioned because we're law-abiding citizens to respect you know, the police departments, to respect law enforcement because we are law-abiding people. And so it's always been this way where gun owners often defer to uh, law enforcement when it comes to many issues. Those days have got to end here in Missouri. They have to end, frankly, across the country. We respect law enforcement. We back the blue until they betray the Constitution. We back the blue until they betray our constitutional rights. And that is what we're seeing right now uh, here in Missouri and in many states across the country where they're opposing constitutional carry, opposing SEPA, opposing stand your ground law. This is about power. This is about money. And, and folks, we, we don't even know where that cash goes. When it comes into their coffers, again, just to be clear, if you, if you got tuned in late, when the state, when state patrol or the city PDs, St. Louis, whatever, when they assist the federal government in task force work, they get to keep 80% of the money that they seize. Or they, they used to, anyway, until we passed SAPA. That's why they oppose it. Now, the question is, where does that money go? Where does that money go? I mean, I, I can't give you a straight answer on all the details of where this cash goes, but I wouldn't be surprised to find out that eventually it makes its way back into pension funds or new vehicles for the department head or all kinds of self-serving stuff. It's all designed to protect them, to give them your money, to give them more power. And when we heard this last night and we verified it last night, you know, it's just, it's just a, it's an amazing, shameful, disgraceful um, condemnation of Missouri's department heads who have been leading the fight to oppose our freedom here in Jeff City for so many years. So going forward, when you hear from a sheriff, when you hear from a police chief, when you hear from guys who lead these departments and they're opposing whether it's our bill this year on Send Your Ground Law or last year's SAPA bill, if they're a party to a lawsuit right now here in the Capitol or here in the Supreme Court trying to challenge SAPA, you need to ask them very point blank and just say, how much money has your department lost as a result of SAPA? How much money were you getting from the government teat? How much cash have you put into your department's pockets fighting against my freedoms. See folks, the reality is for the uh, police chiefs, not the sheriffs, they're elected, police chiefs who are appointed, the reality is these people in the big cities anyway, they're not actual cops. Sure, they've got a badge, they've got a gun, but these are political activists. These are political animals who do the bidding of the mayor's office and these folks are radical leftists they're, they're political operatives working down here in the Capitol. Terry says, who are the 60 department heads? Guys, just Google it. It's all over the news. 60 department heads in Missouri have filed suit trying to block uh, or stop or overturn SAPA law. It's all over the news. Just Google it. Um, but you just got to ask them, say, are you here to oppose my gun rights because of money? How much money? How much has your department lost due to constitutional carry? How much has your department lost due to SAPA law last year? How much power are you trying to protect? How much this is about money? Have you hoard out your support for my freedoms for a paycheck? That's the question you have to ask these guys, folks. They're, the, the days of giving them a blanket um, support or blanket respect because of their position, those days are gone. Those days are gone. Again, we back the blue until they betray our constitutional freedoms. Terrible stuff. How do we stop the police chiefs if they are appointed instead of elected, says Michael. 
Well, Michael, that's kind of a separate conversation. That's a, that's, that's a, that's a, that the pressure there goes on the city council or the mayor's office. This is more of a, a, a macro conversation on the opposition to SEPA. And when you talk to your state reps, you talk to your state senators, and they say, well, I oppose this bill because, well, here, here's an example. Lincoln Huff, Senator Lincoln Huff, Republican from Springfield, viciously attacked Stand Your Ground expansion in the state capitol here last Tuesday. He walked in there. He said, so just to be clear, law enforcement here opposes this bill. Is that right? And they said, yes, we do. And he says, well, I stand with law enforcement, so, you know, piss off, basically. And he left the room. So when your politicians tell you, I won't support Stand Your Ground law, I won't support SEPA, of course, this was last year. When you hear that, most of the time they'll say, because my local law enforcement opposes it. You now have the tools that you need to critique that and say, well, let's just be straight. They oppose it because of money. They oppose it because of a profit motive. So don't give your state rep, don't give your state senator any room to breathe on this. Don't defer and say, oh, okay, well, if law enforcement opposes it, then I guess we have to just vote it down. No, 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 no. There is money involved. There is a profit mar a motive involved in law enforcement's opposition to your freedom. I hope that sinks in. That should make you just shake with rage. The idea that your sheriff or your police chief is prostituting your freedoms, your right to keep and bear arms for money from Merrick Garland and Joe Biden's DOJ. It is, again, it is shameful, it is disgraceful, and it is far, far beneath the dignity of the profession that they are engaged in. Don't give them an inch. When you talk with your law enforcement uh, agencies, make sure and ask them again. So you're opposing my gun rights in Jeff City. Just for the record, how much cash did you lose? How much cash did your department lose because of the impact of SAPA law, guys? That is the question we have to ask. I want to make sure everyone knows about this because this has been, there's always been questions amongst gun owners. Well, should we be concerned that law enforcement's opposed to these bills? There's always been some folks who have those questions. Now you have your answer. Now you have your answer. Their opposition was never about freedom, never about policy, never about the Second Amendment, never about public safety. They hoard out their positions. They hoard out their badges for money. It's disgusting. Folks, share our video as far and wide as you can. Everyone has to know what's happening here in Jefferson City. And guys, we'll keep you informed. Terry's asking, who can we call? Uh, state reps and state senators. Uh, yes, exactly. You can call them and tell them that we want them to, to hold the line on SEPA, number one, and to support Senior Ground Law expansion with Senator Burleson and Representative Taylor this session here in Jeff City. More to come, guys, later on in the day. Share the video far and wide, and don't give your uh, lo local law enforcement any space to breathe on their opposing your gun rights until they answer the question, how much money is at stake for your department as you oppose my right to keep and bear arms. Thanks a lot, folks. Take care. We'll be in touch.